Good morning. I have never done anything like this before. I hope that it is working. And while I'm waiting for people to get on, okay, while I'm waiting for people to get on, if you could just, yay, okay, I see a heart, it's working. If you wanna comment, what is your favorite place to pray? Because we're gonna be talking about prayer. And my name is Sarah Strand. I am not on staff, but I feel like I am sometimes. I'm married to Jason Strand, who is our senior pastor. And he, a lot of times when I meet people from our church, they ask me the same question, which is, good morning, everyone. Yes, okay, yay, hi, Christina. Okay, so people a lot of times ask me, does Jason ask you before he tells stories about you? Does he ask for permission? And the answer to that is yes. He always asks me permission because he has me read his messages and he's never given one that I haven't read at least once. And he's so great about asking me feedback and listening to me. So. That's great, and I also volunteer at the Blaine campus with the Ground Zero with a wonderful group of young ladies. So I'm excited to talk about prayer today as we continue on talking about spending time with God. And I have never had to be convinced of the importance of prayer. I've seen the power of prayer, and someone once said that if Jesus had to pray, then how much more do we need to be in solitude and pray. And so I've never had to be convinced of that, but I have had to work on my prayer life. I am a very distracted prayer. And not only that, but just to be honest, sometimes other things sound more fun. But when I actually spend that time with him praying, there's nothing more satisfying. And prayer hasn't always come easy for me. So I'm gonna share some ways today that has helped me personally, just to grow in my own prayer life. And we're going to talk about Hebrews 4, 16. So if you want to follow along while you're opening up that scripture, Hebrews 4, 16, I'm curious to know what do you think of? What is the first word that comes to your mind when you think of God's throne? For me, it is definitely a reverence kind of a, a holy fear. And this verse in Hebrews says, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Let us approach the throne of grace with confidence. And I love that because, you know, there's times when we can, as humans, just have a workspace mentality. And if you look at this scripture, it says, let us then, right before this verse, it's talking about Jesus. And it's talking about how he is perfect and he made a way for us to come to the throne. And yet, I'll find myself sometimes, even after I develop these spiritual disciplines in my life and times of prayer, which are all good things, I have found myself saying during the day, throughout the day, if I, if I got busy and I went out with my kids right away and I didn't spend time with God, all of a sudden, five hours later, I find myself not talking to God as much. And prayer is just that, it's just talking to God. And I was realizing that I was not seeing God for who he is. He's different than human relationships. He's holy and he's perfect and he sees us through the lens of Christ. So I spend time with God because it's gonna, it, it's beneficial for me, not because he's gonna love me more, if that makes sense. He doesn't love me more because I spend time with him. And so he wants us to come to his throne of grace with confidence and be able to approach him, not because of anything we've done, even on our best day, we have nothing to offer him. If we've loved people and we have spent time in his word and we have prayed all morning, we have no more merit at that point to come to him. So 
it really helped me when I'm in the car and I'm busy or at the darkest place or at the moment when I'm the most ashamed to be able to say, I can still come to God's throne and ask him forgiveness and talk to him because of what Jesus did for me. I love that verse. He wants to hear from us. Even actually last night as I was preparing for this devotion, my teenage son, who doesn't give me a lot of words these days and doesn't talk a whole lot, decided he was gonna talk my ear off for an hour and a half while he dribbled a basketball. And I listened because it was such a gift to me that he wanted to talk to me. And I think that's how our father feels, is he wants us to approach that throne of grace. And I had some ideas that have just really helped me. And one of them is to pray scripture. Sometimes we don't know what, what to pray, but the amazing thing is that God actually teaches us in his word. The Lord's Prayer would be an example. And this year I've been waking up and going through the Lord's Prayer in my own words. And that has been really, uh, just really neat way to wake up and start my day. Uh, there's, you know, I'll be praying even through a proverb. It might not even apply to me at that moment, but I'll pray that over my family. You know, please help us not to walk down that path of, of temptation. So praying through the scripture is a really great way to grow in the way that we pray and to be reminded of new ways. The second one is journaling. Jason's talked about this with me. I, I was frustrated years ago with how little my, how little I was praying compared to how much I wanted to pray. And so I told God that I would not go to bed at night before I had journaled my prayers, which I wanted to go to bed. So I began a habit that every afternoon I would start praying. And that was probably 13 years ago that I started journaling my prayers on the computer. And that was really a launch pad for me. And I, I honestly think it kept me sane through the years of my kids being little and staying home with them. It, it kind of renewed my strength in the middle of the day and allowed me to cast my anxieties on him. And so if you find yourself like me praying and all of a sudden you're thinking about what's for dinner, I would really encourage you to try uh, journaling your prayers. And the third is finding a time and a place like I said, in the morning, I'll, I'll try to just wake up, even if it's a simple prayer and have my thought, the first thought be God, you know, thank you for another day of life. Uh, you know, please use me, fill me with your spirit. So having those times built in throughout the day are really helpful because we are very forgetful people. And even falling asleep praying. God's not offended if we fall asleep praying. There's no better place than falling asleep in his eye, in his arms. And then uh, to pray with someone. I know that can be very intimidating. I still sometimes finding a, find it a little intimidating. But sometimes I'll just in the car say, hey kids, let's pray for dad. Uh, you know, I'll pray for our church while the services are going on. And it helps me to stay focused. And praying with friends, I have a, a couple groups of friends that will pray together. And it's it can be hard for me even to not think about what are they thinking about my prayers. But again, prayer, God wants to hear our hearts. And it doesn't have to be eloquent. And our friends don't want us to be eloquent, really, when it comes down to it. So praying together in a group, there can be a lot of power in that. And I wanted to share just some answers to prayer that I've seen in my own life to encourage you guys maybe. And I've seen, I've seen so many answers to prayer, but I chose one that was one of those things that I, I felt like at the time was never going to be answered. I need to see, yeah, I think I have five minutes. Okay. So, and that's my family. When I was in high school, college, I had been transformed by Christ, but my family was not going to church. My mom was really uh, deep into depre in depression and anxiety. And my dad, I've talked about this a lot, and my husband has talked about it a lot, that my dad was relapsed into alcohol and drug addiction. And my sister had attempted suicide a few times and not wanted a relationship with God. It was very traumatic. Um, just 
having those experiences. And my brother was uh, smoking weed before school every day with his friends, not going to church, uh, not, you know, on the right path. And I was so discouraged. And I would go through, sometimes through their rooms, and pray for each of them. And my prayer for my mom was that she would have joy and that she would listen to praise and worship as she went throughout her day and did the dishes. That was one of my specific prayers. And that they would each come to know the Lord. And when I am at family gatherings today with them, I am just praising God and thanking Him for His goodness because my mom began to go to church and, and join Bible studies. And I remember one time I came home from college and she was listening to praise and worship as she did the dishes. It was just one of those specific prayers that I remembered him answering. And a lot of you know the story of my dad that after 15 years, a long time praying, he he came to church at Eagle Brook. He started going to Quest 180 and he hit rock bottom and he checked himself into treatment and he's been sober now for, sorry dad, I, I think it's about eight years. Um, can't remember the exact date, even though I know that's so important. And my brother, he is a godly man. He, he has adopted two kids. He loves the Lord. Uh, Jason invited him when he was a youth pastor to come with us on a trip to Colorado. And my brother renewed his faith and he started to minister to his friends that he was in the morning. They were still offering him weed every morning and he would decline and they thought it was going to be a phase but he ministered to them every morning and two of his best friends ended up becoming missionaries and coming to Christ as well and then my sister we prayed for her for a while and you know maybe 10 years after that she uh, renewed her faith she started going to church she's a godly wonderful mom leads as a single mom her kids to Christ and my mom too is one of the, is such a prayer warrior. I feel like there are many people who could give this devotion who have more devoted prayer lives. I thought of that, but you know what? God, he wants he wants us just to come to him and talk to him. And this morning I just want to encourage you after after we're done to come before imagine yourself coming before his throne of grace. What are those things that are deep in your heart that you've asked him or you maybe it feels too bold to ask? And he says, come boldly. And sometimes we have to keep asking. Those, those answers to prayer that I just shared with you were not overnight. A lot of those were years of praying. And so I just encourage you to come before his throne. And I'm going to close in prayer right now. I'm going to do it a little different. I'm going to pray the Lord's Prayer, kind of in my own own words, whether you know it or not, you can pray with me. Lord Jesus, Father in heaven, holy is your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Your name is holy. We pray your kingdom come, and we pray your will be done, and your kingdom come in our, in our world, in our country, God, in our church, in our, in our lives, and we pray your will be done in the decisions that we're making right now and in our families. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask that you'll give us our needs today, our daily bread, our physical needs, our more of your spirit. And we just pray forgiveness. Lord, will you forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us? And will you lead us away from temptation? We protect us from evil. Yours is the power and the the glory and the power in the kingdom in heaven. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your throne of grace that you offer, that you invite us to. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for having me.